Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of Game Talk Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Game Talk Talk with Captain Will so I continue to bring you that gospel of Game Talks every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are now, you are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Will, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I appreciate it. I want to thank uh, the new folks, the old folks, and everyone in between who've been rocking with Captain Will. Follow me on Twitter at Gamecocks Talk. Follow me on Instagram at Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. And wherever you get your podcast, you can find Captain Will. We got a good one today, y'all. I said we got a good one today, y'all. We talked about three things that went right versus TCU before we turn the chapter and start focusing on South Florida. Three things that went right. Okay, so we all know that we blew out the, the supposed number, number nine ranked team in the country. Blew them out on their own home court like they stole something. Blew them away. Haley Van Lift, I'm sure, had nightmares thinking about Raven Johnson, thinking about Maddie McDaniel, thinking about Malaysia Full Wallet. It was just so special to see. And the first thing that went right about this basketball game is the defense. Our defense was nasty. Our defense was stank. Our defense was filthy. You talking about a TCU squad who can shoot the rock. You talk about a TCU squad that has uh, potentially, if you read some of the mock draft stuff, you're talking about Haley Van Lith and Sedona Prince going in the first round of the WNBA, in the WNBA draft. So shut them down. They shot 33% from the field, okay? They shot 26% from the three-point line. This was TCU. TCU was completely out of rhythm. They were completely perplexed. They were completely thrown off by the physical, the speed of the Gamecocks. It was, we were playing at a level, it's like, oh no, like on a, whatever game you might play, we play in expert mode and they play in novice. Cause it, that was how the game looked like on Sunday night. That it, it, it just wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. When the Gamecocks are playing like this, ain't nothing you can do. And now you can do just hope, just hope that something's going to change. But it didn't change because Game Guard still shot over 50% from the field. It was nothing that TCU can do in this basketball game. It was so amazing to see. They were out rebounded by 26. Out rebounded. Basketball is so special. And when you out rebound the team, they didn't, and I, and I misspoke for somebody to correct me. They did not out rebound TCU by 26. They out rebounded TCU by like 10 or 12. You know, uh, it's kind of hard to out rebound a team by 26 when, uh, you know, we shoot 50% from the field ourselves. So it's not as many offensive rebounds. But regardless of the fact we out rebounded them, they, we, got, we had more steals in them. We had 12 turnovers, they had 20 turnovers. So many metrics, you know, it, it, it's just, it was so nice. We had 10 steals. They had five. I mean, Malaysia full while had three breakaway layups, you know, Ashton Watkins had a shot block. She didn't, she didn't complain. She didn't mope. She didn't do any of those things. She went down the court, stole the ball back. Mm -hmm, another steal. Stole the ball back and dumped it on Sedona Price. Sedona Prince. I mean, I'm just, it's just, uh, just awesome. Uh, uh, I, talked, I talked earlier about Haley Van Lith. Haley Van Lith had five turnovers. TCU going into that basketball game had one of the highest assist to turnover ratios, you know, in, 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 in the NCAA. And Haley Van Lith had a, a spectacular, you know, Assist to turnover ratio. And in this basketball game, she had six assists. She did. Six assists for five turnovers. That don't mean nothing to me. It doesn't. 
We nothing. But you see on the box score to show, oh, Haley Mellis had 21 points. Uh, she had six assists, but it don't mention that she had five turnovers and played horrific defense. Horrific. If they're the reason that she's going to fall in the WNBA mock drafts or in the future, the WNBA draft, it's because of her defense. She should have came to South Carolina and improved her defensive stock. Instead of going to a TCU where you're going to find your shot back, you should have went to a team that can actually nurture you and learn how to play defense. That's what should have happened, but it didn't happen. Madison Connor, their other uh, top player, she has seven turnovers. Seven? Seven turnovers in the basketball game? Two of their guards had 12 turnovers between them? That ain't basketball. That ain't basketball. If you want to watch how guards actually play, protect the ball, and shoot the ball well, you look at South Carolina. I love seeing these, these uh, who's the best guard rotation in the country? And, you know, they have it. You see all those things, and you and then one of them I saw had um, Powell and and Malaysia, and then and so okay, okay, that's cool. Powell and Malaysia is a good is a good uh, guard rotation for South Carolina, and it's, you know it's one of the best in the country. But also you can say Powell and Tessa, Tessa and Malaysia, Raven and Powell. It's so many different ways. It's so many different, you know. Uh, 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 situations and combinations that Carolina can throw at you, and we threw all of them at them, all of them, and they were so out of whack. Sedona Prince, Sedona Prince, a six foot seven, six year senior, got shut down. Six points, two rebounds, first round pick. Okay, that's what you want to say, but I saw a whole lot of flaws in her game. Against top level competition. If you ain't playing top level competition, I don't care what you do. I don't even look at the stats from playing, you know, uh subpar teams because you're gonna get those numbers. You're six foot seven. You're supposed to. You're supposed to. But when you play Carolina, you deny. You did not do well whatsoever. And yeah, I don't know. It was it just hmm, okay. I see you. I see you, Sedona. I see you, Haley. You don't want to see Carolina no more. You don't want to see us. You don't want to see us no more. You don't want to see us in the, in the tournament. You don't want to see us at Target. You don't want to see us at, at Bojangles. You don't want to see us anywhere. You don't want to see Gordon and Black anytime soon because you got whooped. You got whooped. And the second thing that I really like about this basketball game was welcome back, Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson has entered the party. She has uh, uh, took her shoes off. She brought in a, a Tupperware uh, uh, plate, and it's time to get busy. Raven Johnson looked like Raven Johnson on Sunday, okay? 11 points, three rebounds, three assists. Shot the ball well for all the naysayers. Four for seven from the field, three for six from the three-point line. Here's a stat that no one is talking about. Over the last five games, Raven Johnson is shooting 44% from the three-point line. 44% from the three-point line. Basketball comes in waves, waves. It's very fluid. Things change all the time. She started off cold. Right now, she's in a hot streak in terms of shooting the basketball, especially from the three. If she continues on, which I no, she will against South Florida, and she shoots well again in the Colonial Life Arena. We will stop the narrative talking about Raven Johnson can't shoot. I'm like, dang, all the time we hear that mess. 44% over the last five games, y'all. That's all I'm saying. And play outstanding defense. Because here's the thing, shooters going to hit shots, shooters going to miss shots. But what always travel for Raven Johnson is her defense. Hmm. Can you say that about some of these other players? Can you say that about Haley Van Lip? 
when her shot ain't going in and getting garbage shots at the end of four minutes left in the in the quarter, in the fourth quarter, when you're down by 30 plus points, can you say that? That you can rely on your defense when your shot ain't going in? Raven can. Powell can. Malaysia can. Maddie can. Bree can. Tessa can. Those players can. A whole lot of players can. They're going to just shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, Carolina ain't built like that. Carolina ain't built like that. The third and the final thing that I liked about this game was Chloe Kiss was dominant on the boards once again. Chloe had 12 rebounds in this basketball game. 12 rebounds. Of those 12 rebounds, 10 of them were defensive rebounds. And here's the stat, right? Chloe. <laughs> Chloe only played like 20 minutes. They had 12 rebounds. You, 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 if you have a player who's playing the low 20s in minutes and still is averaging nine rebounds per game, that's Chloe Kiss. Chloe Kiss is averaging 20 minutes, nine rebounds. In a basketball game for the South Carolina Gamecocks. 20 minutes. Chloe is ninth in the SEC in rebounds per game. She's 10th in the SEC in offensive rebounds. This is Chloe Kitt, six foot two. Chloe has, in terms of SEC rebound percentage, okay? SEC rebound percentage, which means when she's in the basketball game, what's the percentage of the time that she's going to get the rebound? She is number one in the in the uh, conference in the SEC in total rebound percentage. She is fifth in the country in total rebound percentage. The question ain't is Chloe the best you no know, rebounder in the SEC. Chloe is one of the best rebounders in the country. Chloe is a doll. She is the best rebounder on our team. And, 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 and it branches out to the SEC and, and the National League. Chloe is special. Second in the SEC in offensive rebound percentage. She can offensive rebounds. She first in defensive rebound percentage. If there's a rebound that needs to be had, Chloe Kiss is going to get it. She's going to get it. I, did, I knew that Chloe was going to develop. I knew she was going to get better and better. But I didn't see Chloe Kiss being our best rebounder on this basketball team and definitely the best rebounder in the SEC. You can say whoever else in the SEC, but you do get your uh, calculator out and for Dutch player and have Dutch player play in 20 minutes. And I guarantee you, they wouldn't be getting nine rebounds a game because Chloe was playing 35 minutes per game. She'll be averaging about 14 rebounds. Yeah. Chloe Kiss is something else, y'all. And this Gamecock team is riding away, even with this difficult schedule. You know, now we get a little break because, you know, is it, you know, exams. Are popping, and we play, you know, South Florida on Sunday. Then we play or Charleston Southern on Thursday. You know, we finally get a little time to rest and 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 take a breath at the plan. Ten team at the top ten team, top ten team before the conference starts. But Carolina is so ready for the conference, so ready. Some of these other teams have only played one top twenty-five team. And say they're going to be ready for the SEC. Okay. Good luck with that. Good, good luck with that. I think the best thing to happen to South Carolina is losing to UCLA. The streak stopped. Got it. But it, since that loss, y'all woke up a, a, a sleeping giant. Carolina ain't number one in the AP poll. Don't mean nothing to me because I don't like the AP poll. AP poll is silly to me. It's silly to me. I like the net ranking. Y'all know, if you've been rocking me for a long time, you know I like the net ranking. 
And that ranking takes into account, the, the, of course, the wins and the losses. It takes into account where those wins and losses happen at. Was it a home? Was it away? It takes into account the strength of schedule. Oh, wow, strength of schedule. College football need to find out about that. It takes into account margin of victory. All those things matter when you are deciding who is the best team in the country. Not because of, oh, uh, you rank number eighth and such because of team number seventh lost, you're supposed to jump up. What if the team that lost played the number one team in the country and the team that that that, that that's getting uh, moved up played the 330th team in the country? So that means so all losses aren't measured the same and all wins are me aren't measured the same. But AP poll don't take that into account. It's so stupid to me. It's just so it just makes no sense to me. But Carolina is number one in the net ranking because of strength of schedule, because of where the games are played. We just played in Texas. Yeah, we played two games in, in Florida. We played in Vegas. We played in Charlotte. We didn't play that many home games. We haven't. It is. And then the home games that we're playing right now, South Florida and, and uh, oh, Charleston Southern, then we got what, Wofford? You know what I'm saying? Then the SEC play star. Got it. Mission accomplished. Standing on business. And Carolina's knowing what we do. This concludes another episode of Game Guys Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Game Guys Talk with Captain Will. So I continue to bring the gospel of Game Guys every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are now, you're not rocking with the best. And since you are rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, J-Rock, let this be.